Hello and God bless you and thank you for joining the sermon today. I appreciate that. Please like and subscribe and I think today I want to cover a subject which uh, may seem controversial to some but to me it's life and we have to deal with life the way it is. Now first I want to read this. I believe churches are meant for praising God. Don't get me wrong when I say what I'm going to say. But so are other ways too. And we have to, wherever we are, do as they did in the book of Acts, walking and leaping and praising God wherever you go. I believe church are meant for praising God. Let me re repeat that again so you understand. Because what is a church? A church is a gathering. A church of the devil. They can be a church of the devil because it's a devil. Okay, it's a meeting, it's an organization, it's a group, okay, it's a gathering. So that also can be a church. Nothing within itself is holy about a church but us being in the church. Really get that. When I was in prison, I told God, I said, Look, God, I don't want churchianity which is basically having a form of godliness, but denying the power. I want to be like Jesus. I want to go out and minister to others and see sign miracles and wonders. I want to do the acts that Jesus did. And then I sought to be like Jesus. Again, I read, I believe churches are meant for praising God. Gatherings are meant for praising God, but so are 2 a.m. car rides, showers, coffee shop, going out for dinner, the gym, conversation with friends, strangers, etc. Don't let a building confine your faith because we will never change the world by going to church. We need to be the church. That's what I'm talking about. I don't want churchianity. I want to be the church. I want to go out, go stand and speak to the people all the words of this life. Walking and leaving and praising God for I saw signs, miracles, and wonders happen. I saw the lame walk, the blind see, the person with the heart attack uh, get healed. So those are the things I want to be because those are the signposts. Those are the advertising campaign that God uses to magnify the Word of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, God tells us, Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you but you may say how, how can that be what what are you what are you talking about what are you talking about in colossians chapter 1 verse 26 i'm going to read it to you even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generation but is now made manifest to the saint to his saints to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among you, the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. Christ in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Once we are raised, I mean, once we are born again, we are saved. We receive then the Holy Spirit in us. That is Christ in us. But there's more to it than having it in us. It's like, how do we bring him out of us? And basically what God wants us to do is to act in his stead. To do the things that he did. So he empowered us. And had the devil known 
what he was doing by crucifying the Lord of glory, he would have never done it. Never. Never, never, ever. Because why? Because now there's Christ in you. There's Christ in me. There's Christ in all those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That if that thou shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead and confess with thy mouth, thou shalt be saved. It's that simple, folks. Do you believe in Jesus? Then basically the act that you need to do now, read the Holy Bible. Empower yourself. And then in Romans 10, 17, it tells us, So then faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing one thing, the Word of God. The Word of God. The Word of God. We need to put on the Word of God to empower us. It's like electricity. If we are not plugged, if the lamp is not plugged into the circuit that carries the electricity, then there's no light shining. A light will not shine if we are not plugged into the source. And the source of information that we need to put up here is reading the Holy Bible. Reading the Holy Bible. And people may say that's so difficult, that's so hard. I, I'll just go to church and be spoon fed. Okay? That's where we are all making a mistake. Because when we leave the church, and when we get out there in the real world, and the world gives us a sucker punch, knocks us down to our feet, we had no place to go but on our knees then and pray. And we need to know how to call upon God to get the results that we want. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you for your loving mercy and your forgiveness of sin. And in the name of Jesus Christ, heal my heart from the hurt. Whatever you need, in the name of Jesus Christ, you can have it. Because that's your, your that's mine, power of attorney to act in Jesus Christ's stead, to unlock the door, to see things happen, to do things that Jesus did. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 2, verse 8. As I was saying earlier, I'm going to prove it now, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And I did a sermon in a church about five years ago, maybe longer, and the minister always taught out of the Old Testament. Okay, he never taught into the New Testament. And in the sermon that I gave, I said there's Christ in you, the hope of glory. The works you can do that Jesus did, you can do also, but greater than these that you can do. And the man literally thought I was cuckoo. He thought I was crazy. But about... Three weeks ago, I went to his church because I had a message to, to give to the congregation. And he was speaking of Christ in you then. And the problem with churches being spoon-fed is a lot of the pastors have not even read the Holy Bible. My son went to his pastor and asked him, he goes to a Pentecostal church, have you read the whole Bible? And the pastor went deep within and said, it's a complicated book, a lot of meditation is involved in it. And he really gave, and then the end of the conversation, he said, no, I have not read it. So here you're dependent upon somebody helping you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, and they themselves are not even empowered. They are not plugged in. A lot of sermons, they buy their teachings. They have a teaching program for the year. And you want to be plugged into that source? Why not 
be plugged here, and then if you want to go to church, go to church. But don't be dependent upon church to feed, fill your spiritual need. It's like this church I went to two weeks ago, they were praying for revival. And I, I was fortunate to get up there afterward, and they were doing all this holy, you know, dancing with the flags, waving the flags, and God, to God be the glory, let's stand up and praise Him. And nothing's wrong with all that, okay? But let's get real. When I got up there, I said, that's never going to happen, revival in this church. People looked at me strange, but that's okay. The church was not filled with the Holy Spirit in the sense of they were not putting the Word on. So if you want to grow spiritually, put the Word on. Read the Holy Bible daily. I love you. God bless you. And thank you for reading listening to the sermon today i appreciate that and please again please like and subscribe and i love you